we don't need much motivation if you want to study power and authority, and because uh, they are pervasive components of social life. So every hierarchical organization uh, involves authority and power in, in bureaucracy of public administration, firms, and political offices. But interestingly, economists uh, did not study that for a long time. Only they, they only studied recently uh, examining the origins and consequences of authority. Uh, but whereas the other social sciences, they have always been very, very interested in, in these concepts. They were in the center of sociology, in the center of political science, and even psychologists have been have, have shown more interest in the concept than for a long time economists, but it, it is different now. In the last few years, economists became interested in the last 15 years, and maybe one message today is that the combination of clean economic model and clean experiments can yield additional insights into these concepts, in particular into the motivation and, 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 and incentive effects. So let me first sketch the economist's view, and I think many social scientists share this view, not just economists, so on authority. Uh, and that view is that authority is an institution device that can be deliberately shaped in order to achieve a more efficient allocation of resources. For example, you shape an organization in a way, you create jobs, you create offices, you create lines of command in such a way that, you max that in the ideal circumstances you maximize the output of the organization. So the, the, the crude thing here is that authority, and by authority I mean throughout the talk, a right to make a decision that affects other people's payoffs, and even if they would resist that decision, uh, they could change it. So I have to write, it's, it's, a, it's a decision right, so I equate authority uh, for simplicity here with a decision right, and I will talk a little bit about to what extent that involves power in a few minutes. So decision right or authority are a means to an end. For example, in the presence, when you can't write the complete contracts, assignment of decision rights can be used to achieve uh, a, a second best efficient allocation, as economists call it. Uh, however, these models never assume that authority has value per se. By value per se, I mean you really want it just for the sake of having it, and not for the sake of achieving some instrument to go with. So what would you have to prove in order to make a statement that people value authority and power just for the sake of uh, having authority and power? It would require behavioral evidence that people are in fact willing to give up material or other resources. So they have to be willing to accept the net loss just for having power. So in, in that setting, power must not be profitable for them, it must be costly for them. You see, everybody agrees that if I have power that I can extract the rent from you, many people would like to do that. That's not so if if as a if if in a, in a uh, if, if you are the boss of a big company and you can extract a big salary because of big corporate governance rules, uh, it's clear you have authority, you have power, but it helps you to achieve something, it helps you to become richer. Now the, the claim here is a different one. People don't value that. So when you when when Adam Smith is right that they have a preference for power per se, for love, a love for tyrannizing and dominating, then they would have to be willing to give up resources uh, in order to have that power. So well, what did we do? Well, I give you at the beginning an overview of our results because we didn't expect what we find. So. In retrospect, I tell you a story that is a different story than the story I would have told you at the beginning of the research program. Because at the beginning of that research program, we just thought, let's do a little, nice little experiment on the optimal allocation of authority. And then we stumbled on something which I think is much more interesting. And then what is much more interesting is that we unexpectedly found that many subjects seem to have a preference for authority. And there also seems to be an endowment effect in authority. What is an endowment effect? An endowment effect is if I give you, if I randomly allocate to 50% of the people in this room a good, then the endowment effect, if the endowment effect is present, they immediately start telling you that would more highly 
than those who have not been, randomly not been involved with the good. So, so basically you start valuing a good just because you possess it. And we seem to observe something like that in this experiment. There seems to be an endowment effect in authority. Those who are randomly assigned to have it keep it and subsequently value it more. And this preference we can show causes important frictions in the delegation of authority and leads to an overall reduction of expected payoffs. Not just for the person who doesn't delegate, but sometimes also for the person who is, so to speak, the subordinate in that situation. And in addition, we find that authority has strong motivation effects. In particular, the possession of authority increases your willingness to put forward effort, 